me is we laugh a lot, we rap a lot. I'm asked to be an Indian again, again. I'm telling them that college bill is worried. That's a what we on the field of court. They better be aware of that. They scared of that. Of course, look at the ceiling. What up, Mr. Floor? Yeah, college bill. And yes, I'm glad to say that I'm a K-Hawk. I'm about to graduate. Yeah, uh huh. You know what it is. College Hill High School. A champion. And a very good evening, everyone, as we welcome your Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium here on the campus of Collinsville High School. Sorry about the uh, interruption of the intro, but I didn't know they were going to start senior night festivities this quickly. So without further ado, we will take everything downstairs to the public address announcer, Chad Burgess. First, we have Cadence Gillespie. The parents. We have Morgan Hoffman. Parents, Kevin Hoffman and Rhonda Hoffman. Her future plans are to attend college to pursue a career working with children in health care or education. Next, we have Kayla McCain. Parents, Dale McCain and Jennifer McCain. Future plans attend Swift for two years and transfer to a four year to graduate with a bachelor's degree and nursing. Next, we have Dakota Shaver, parents, Maria and James Beezer. Her future plans to become a teacher for early childhood education and also work with special needs. Next, let's introduce the K-Hawk dance team, coached by Robin Smith, Rochelle Jones, and Kaylee Nosbich. First, we have Trinity Fallsbrack, Paris Mike, and Rachel Fallsbrack. Her future plans include to attend Fond du University and eventually Bolthard School of Nursing to major in biology and nursing. She'd like a career in the medical field as a travel nurse or a prenatal nurse. Next, we have Paige Stamps, Paris, Jeff, and Michelle Stamps. Future plans, Paige, plans to attend the University of South Florida to major in marketing.
And there you have it, kids. The 2020 senior class for your Collinsville Cahawk cheerleaders, the dance team, and of course, the basketball team. Well, welcome, welcome one and all as we get you ready for this contest here, the final home game of the year between Collinsville and Belleville East. Cahawks come into this contest with an overall record of 26 and three. They are eight and two in conference play. Belleville East, they come in at 17 and 11. They are three and seven in conference play. We are on a little late. The JV game went to, game went to overtime and it was a uh, scintillating uh, affair, if you will. 24-21, uh, Belleville East led at the half. 35-29, Collinsville was down at the end of three by six points, but they came back and tied it up at 41. And we went into overtime and it went all the way down to the wire. Collinsville lost by one point, 52 to 51 despite the fact that Collinsville had the last second shot at the buzzer, but it just would not fall in. Travion Swaggart ended up with 16 points in that loss for Collinsville. But let's get you set for this basketball game on the varsity side of things between Collinsville and Belleville East, and we'll do that after we welcome you into the pregame show brought to you by Cullop Jennings Florist. Cullop Jennings Florist is a staple in the Collinsville area, has been for generations. They are located at 517 West Clay Street. You can stop in for weekly specials. Right now, that special is a dozen carnations for $20, and that includes the stylish vase in which it comes. So for that special or anything else, give Cullop Jennings a call at 344-0404 or online at cullopjennings.com. Had a chance a little while ago to catch up with one of those seniors that we just saw out on the floor getting recognized for their senior night, and that would be Logan Carlisle. My interview with Logan coming up in just a moment here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Call up Jennings Flores, a Collinsville original since 1939. Call up Jennings Flores has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all designs, from traditional to trend setting. Call up Jennings Flores is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion, from anniversaries to birthdays. Graduations to weddings, Call of Jennings Forest is there for any life's major moment. Call of Jennings Forest, 517 West Clay Street in Collinsville. Call 344-0404 or online at callofjennings.com. And we welcome you back into the Cullop Jennings Flores pregame show here on the Cahawk Sports Network. It is senior night here at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium, the final home game of the regular season for your 2019-2020 Collinsville Cahawk boys basketball team. It's been a really good season, and we're going to finish out by talking to our final senior. I want to clarify that. I have not talked to Aaron Moulton this year because he has not played. There is one more senior on the team, but my focus tonight is going to be on Logan Carlisle, the last senior that I have not interviewed this year. So... Let's start off with a little uh, quick hit stuff just to get you loosened up and relax a little bit, all right? Um, Frosted Flakes or Cheerios? Cheerios. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Black or blue? Blue. What's your favorite color? Blue. That's why you said blue. All right, um, let's talk about school a little bit. What is your uh, favorite subject in school? Mm. Well, Probably right now, actually, stats. I'm doing pretty good in that class. I'm enjoying it. Got some good friends in there. It's just a fun time. 
That's called stats? AP statistics, math class. Okay, so it's a math thing. So you like, you, you're a numbers guy, right? Yeah, I'm also in accounting. I like numbers. I'm good with that. All right, so does that aspect in you liking numbers, does that help you in the game of basketball? Because there is some numbers involved, correct? I mean, positioning and defenses and things like that? Yeah, that's true. I don't know so much of it helps me there. I mean, I like to keep track of my percentages off the court, you know, how I'm doing. But as far as that goes, no, I just like to play the game, and when I'm in there, I just do what I do. What is your uh, least favorite subject and why? Least favorite right now would probably be, it's kind of a tough one. I'm we got pretty good classes so far right now. So I don't really think I have a least favorite subject. What about U.S. history? I had that last year, and actually I love my teacher and that. That was actually a really good class. So the teacher made the difference? Oh, yeah. Teachers make a world of difference for me. I agree with you, man. I had some of those classes here at this school, too. All right, uh, let's talk a little bit about your family. Talk to us about mom, dad, brother, sisters, dogs, cats. What do you got? Well, I've got three sisters, actually. Uh, one of them is in seventh grade, still living with us, and the others are uh, past college. Um, mom and dad are big supporters of me, always have been, always encouraged me to push myself forward. Same with the rest of my family. And uh, I'm looking forward to hopefully having a good night tonight as it's the last home game I'll ever play here. And uh, what are the kind of the feelings that you go through when you know you're walking in this building and it's the last time you're gonna put on the basketball uniform and actually play a game of basketball on this court? I've had a lot of emotions about it, really. It's, it's, it just doesn't feel like it's my last one yet. I'm sure when it's over, I'll feel different about it, but it's, it's weird. I'm not, lo I'm not looking forward to it because I've had such a good time with my brothers over the four years. It's gonna be sad when it's over, but I'm enjoying it while it's happening. All right, let's talk about your uh, basketball career here for a second at uh, Collinsville High School. You're a senior, which means you cannot play on the JV team, but you got most of your playing time over the last couple of years playing for the JV team because kind of hard to crack the lineup when you got guys like Adrian Jones and Kawan Smith and Rayshon Taylor in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a role player. I mean, I can get in there, I can rebound, which my rebounding's improved a lot, my defense has improved a lot. I go in there and uh, I've always been known as a shooter. That's what I do. Uh, haven't been able to get too many shots this year, but when I'm open, I'm taking them. And uh, I mainly just try to get in there and work on rebounding, do what I do to give my teammates a rest and do what we can do to win. Yeah, a couple of few times that this year we've uh, seen you come into the game. It's like, well, we need some points, man. And, you know, so we're going we're gonna to bring in Logan Carlisle, and the first thing you do is spot up for a three. Yeah, that's what I'm in there to do, and I'm well aware of it. So I just get in the corner. That's where I'm put, and I'm ready to go. All right, talk to me about uh, being able to have like a front row seat to uh, this season and watching the likes of Rayshon Taylor and KJ and Skeet out there doing their thing. It's really incredible. They're very good players. I'm happy to be a part of it. Like, no matter what I'm doing, I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm always rooting for him, especially Ray. He's had an incredible season, becoming the all-time scorer. KJ's doing great inside, and Skeet's defense is just as good as ever. It's just fun to watch them, even though I'm right there supporting them. I mean, I get the most playing time, but I'm still there supporting them through the whole time. I'm happy to see him succeed. Tell me uh, about this year in particular. What has been the favorite moment on the court for you to witness this year? Favorite moment on the court? Uh, I think that goes to last time we played Belleville East and David cut through the lane and got that assist from Ray and dunked it. That was a really, really amazing moment. Also, when Ray broke his, uh, the, what was it, the highest point scored in the game on that dunk, that was great too. Those are two of my favorite moments. All right, you have uh, Belleville East here tonight. You just mentioned the Belleville East game. We did that one over there at Belleville East High School. Last home game of the year. What do you want to see out of your teammates tonight and yourself? I hope we go out there and just give it all we got. This is our last home game. I hope we make it big. hope we come out with a great win. It'll be tough. The conference games have been tough lately, but I know we can do it, and I'm looking forward to having a good game. All right, last question, I'll let you go. After this, uh, you guys close out the season with East St. Louis. Got a shot at a Southwestern Conference title which could actually may or may not happen tonight, depending on what happens in another gymnasium. After that, you guys start one week from tonight in the playoffs against Granite City. Had a tough time against Granite City that first time. How are you going to wiggle your way out and figure a way out to not have that happen again? Yeah, we're definitely well aware it'll be tough because we struggled last time, but we just need to keep our heads straight, play our game. Don't We have a habit of playing other teams' games, which we can't do that. We need to play our game. Making shots, which we've been working on shooting drills in practice, so I think we'll, we'll be better at that. But we've got to fight to the end. We just got to make sure we keep fighting because it will be tough. 
Senior Logan Carlisle. Everyone. Thank you uh, very much, young man, for the visit. I appreciate it. Thank you. It's good to be here. Logan Carlisle of your Collinsville Chaos will take a break here on the Cullop Jennings Flores pregame show. When we come back, we'll set up the starting five for each side. More names, more numbers, all that and more coming up on the Cahawk Sports Network. Call up Jennings Flores, a Collinsville original since 1939. Call up Jennings Flores has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all designs, from traditional to trend setting. Call up Jennings Flores is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion. From anniversaries to birthdays, graduations to weddings, Call of Jennings Forest is there for any life's major moment. Call of Jennings Forest, 517 West Clay Street in Collins Hill. Call 344-0404 or online at callofjennings.com. Just because you can cut your own hair doesn't mean you should. The shop a great place in Collinsville for men and boys haircuts is where you should take your hair. The shop is owned and operated by Collinsville High School graduates Danny Cress and Jody Neiman and is located at 103 South Seminary Street in Uptown Collinsville. The shop isn't just another place to get a haircut as Danny and Jody take great joy in getting to know their clients and look forward to turning those clients into friends. When you sit in a stylish chair at the shop, Jody and Danny pride themselves on getting to know you well enough to say, the usual? So men, and boys, if you're tired of the same old cookie cutter approach to haircuts, check out Danny and Jody at the shop. You may just walk out with not only a fantastic cut, but you may also walk out with a friend. Or two, the shop in Collinsville, 618-772-7175. No appointment necessary. The shop, 103 South Seminary in Uptown Collinsville. Cafe Agape serves up some of the best sandwiches, burgers, pork steaks, meatloaf, and more in Collinsville. And yes, they do catering. Wedding receptions, luncheons, business meetings, and more. And Cafe Agape is your destination for all of your holiday and party favorites, both main courses and delicious sides. Cafe Agape, check them out at 703 St. Louis Road, or check out the lunch buffet at the Columbus Plaza location on 157 in Collinsville. Call Cafe Agape at 345-CAFE, 345-2233. Yes, they still cater. Cafe Agape, that's some good eats. Hi, Purple and White fans. This is Dan Mode, class of 1989. I'm with New American Funding. Myself and New American Funding are proud sponsors of Cahawk Athletics. As we have great coaches at CHS on all the courts, fields, and tracks, we like to coach you through the home buying process and refinance process. If there's ever anything we can do, I can be reached at 618-973-5343 or www.danmodeloans.com. Let's support our student athletes at CHS. They deserve the best. Thank you for your time and go Cahawks. The people of Illinois welcome you. The folks in Collinsville, Illinois, well, they want you to stick around for a while and enjoy the sights, the fun, the food, and of course, the Collinsville Cahawks. The city of Collinsville is a proud supporter of the Collinsville Unit 10 School District. So welcome to Collinsville. Come on over, catch a Cahawks game, or enjoy some of the new places to eat, shop, and have fun. There's plenty to do for the young and the young at heart. Enjoy Christmas at the Collins House during the holidays, tunes that bloom in the warm summer months, and more. There's plenty to do in Collinsville, so come on over for a bit. The folks in Collinsville would love to see you. For more information, go to www.collinsville.org. Pack Mail of Collinsville, locally owned and operated by Ryan Combs. Pack Mail can ship anything, anywhere. They treat you like a neighbor because, well, you are a neighbor. Pack Mail offers shipping materials and containers, private mailboxes, as well as climate controlled self storage. Visit Pack Mail at 407 Beltline Road in Collinsville. Online at WeShipStLouis.com or call PacMail at 346-4884. Lakeside Roofing in Collinsville. Let the professionals at Lakeside Roofing protect your most important investment, your home or business. Have the elements taken a toll on your roof system? Notice a leaking roof? Maybe it's time for a free roof inspection. Regular maintenance can extend the life of your roofing system by 10 years or more. 
Lakeside Roofing is your winning team for commercial and residential roofing systems. Lakeside All-Star Professionals have installed, repaired, and maintained hundreds of roofs on both sides of the river. Call Lakeside Roofing today at 618-344-2800 in Collinsville or 314-241-5253 or online at lakesideroofing.com. Choose experience, choose Lakeside. First National Bank of Waterloo, celebrating over 100 years of banking in the Metro East. Visit First National Bank of Waterloo's O'Fallon branch office for your mortgage and lending needs. Why? Super low closing costs, low construction loan rates, and they do so much to support our local communities. When you need a loan, come see Bill Metzger at First National Bank of Waterloo in O'Fallon. Call Bill at 618-632-1010. Visit him at 104 Regency Park in O'Fallon or online at fnbwaterloo.com. That's my bank, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Call up Jennings Flores, a Collinsville original since 1939. Call up Jennings Flores has a wide variety of green and blooming plants, specializing in all designs, from traditional to trend settings. Call up Jennings Flores is, of course, your place for beautiful flowers, suitable for any occasion. From anniversaries to birthdays, graduations to weddings, Call Up Jennings Flores is there for any life's major moment. Call Up Jennings Flores, 517 West Clay Street in Collins Hill. Call 344-0404 or online at callupjennings.com. And once again, welcome back into the Cullop Jennings Flores pregame show here on the Kayhawk Sports Network as we are just about ready for some basketball here between Collinsville and Belleville East. Kayhawks 26 and 3. Lancers are 17 and 11. Collinsville 8 and 2 in conference play while Belleville East is 3 and 7 in conference play. Kayhawks, they can clinch the Southwestern Conference Championship tonight if they win here and if Edwardsville can beat O'Fallon at O'Fallon High School tonight. And after the first quarter over in O'Fallon, it's a, one of those really low-scoring games that Edwardsville is involved in all the time. Eight to six, O'Fallon has a two-point lead after one quarter of play. As we welcome in Dr. Chris McCluskey on the other microphone. Been a while there, sir. Yes, sir, Todd. I've been busy chasing the uh, CMA, CMS Trailblazers squad around. They had a great run this year, but glad to be back in the booth with you. Thanks for having us. Sure, no problem. Uh, CMS did good. The eighth grade championship uh, almost made it. The sophomore boys last night got their championship. Uh, the future's looking really good for this Kayhawk basketball program, despite the fact that you're getting ready to graduate. Rayshon Taylor and Kedrian Jones and uh, Skeet and Laurent Zeladini and Logan Carlisle and uh, Aaron Moulton. I mean, that's a big, hefty graduating class. It's a hefty graduating class, but there's good things to come in Kayhawk basketball. You know, the sophomore class is great. The eighth grade class has really improved this year. The seventh graders were outstanding this year. And even the sixth grade class is loaded coming up. So, you know, everybody pay attention to Kayhawk basketball. Get your season tickets. Tune into KayhawkSports.com and support these boys for years to come. Well, that is uh, all what we want you all to do. All right, coming into this game, college will averaging 61.8 points scored per game. Bell Bell East, they're not slouchy on the old offense either. They're averaging 60.1 points per game. On the defensive side of things, Collinsville giving up an average of 44.5 points per game, while Bell Bell East is giving up an average of 50.5. And the Kayhawks are, of course, coming off of a 49-43 win Friday night at Bell Bell West that saw Rayshon Taylor with 18 points break the old record for most points scored in a career, broke a 51-year-old record, 2,041 points set in the mid to late 60s by Tom Parker, who graduated here in 1968. And uh, took a while, but we finally uh, got that accomplished. We've been talking about it all year long, and it seemed like a couple of those games when you looked at the schedule at the beginning of the year and you could circle that and say, you could possibly do it there, you could possibly do it there. But you know what? Other teams around this area have had other ideas. Yeah, you know what? Also, Ray's an unselfish player. I mean, there's a lot of games where he could have put up 30 or 35 and he put up 20 or 22 uh, because he was just a team player. So that, there's a lot to be said for a guy who goes out and plays team basketball and still breaks the all-time record. That is very true. Bell Bell East, on the other hand, coming off of a 58-54 win over Normal Community on Friday night. That snapped a two-game losing streak with losses to O'Fallon. 
And uh, then the one we told you about the other night when we were at Belleville West, that overtime buzzer beater that the Maroons had by one point over the Lancers. So uh, the Lancers uh, on the opposite end of that one with uh, Belleville West. And those two teams, they're going to face each other in the first round of the playoffs coming up next week as well. Uh, Belleville East won four in a row uh, just once. That was the uh, final two games of the Prairie Farm Holiday Classic in which they took home the fifth place trophy. Then the uh, first two games of the new year. They have had two three-game winning streaks this year in late November and earlier this month. And uh, they've lost two in a row just three times this year. And uh, Mr. McCluskey, Dr. McCluskey, nothing bigger than a two-game losing streak for this Belleville East squad. They're a good squad. They are a good squad. They've got some young talent. The young sophomore, I don't know what his name off the top of my head. Braxton Stacker. Braxton Stacker. I like the way the kid plays the game. They've got some young talent, young coaching staff. So... Uh, not to be taken lightly, the Cahawks are going to have to come out and play their game uh, to try to go ahead and clinch or maybe even tie the Southwest Conference Championship this year. And that would be nice for Collinsville to get the outright Southwestern Conference Championship because in 2011-12 they had to share it with Edwardsville as both teams went 11-3. and All the way back to 2001-2002 season they had to share it with Belleville East as both teams went 10-4. and the last time Collinsville had the outright title all to themselves was the 95-96 season under Bob Bone. The team went 8-2 in Southwestern Conference play and 22-6 and overall that year. They lost in the uh, sectional semis to Edwardsville in a big way, 71-44. to But, man, it's been uh, since the 90s since Collinsville has had a championship all to themselves. It shows how competitive the Southwest Conference is. And, I mean, really anything can happen in this conference. You're, it's one of the best conferences in all, the entire state of Illinois. And so to even be competitive and be you know, amongst the top of, the, of those teams is really an accomplishment. Regular season ends on Friday. Collinsville will head to East St. Louis for their final game. And the regular season ends on Friday for Belleville East, too, as they travel to Edwardsville. And as I mentioned, Belleville East plays Belleville West in the regional semifinal. That's a Wednesday game. We have the first semifinal of that particular regional at Belleville East. Collinsville will take on Granite City on Tuesday. The next night, Belleville West takes on Belleville East, and the winners of those two games will meet on Friday for the championship. The history between these two times, it goes back 50 years. That's when Belleville East was invented. After the Belleville School District became too big for one school, they split into two, and Belleville East actually owns the record over Collinsville in those 50 years with 95 wins, and Collinsville has 69 wins. Over the last 20 years, it's still been Belleville East. Collinsville is 15 and 31 over the last 20 years against these Lancers, and 1-0 in the last 20 years in playoffs. They've only met one time in the playoffs in the last 20 years. And uh, that was a 78 to 48 loss in the 2017 regional semifinal. Coach Lee himself, he's nine and 15 against Belleville East and he had that one loss in the playoffs. So you add that together and that's nine and 16 for Coach Lee against Belleville East. Last year, these two teams split with a win for Collinsville here and a win for Belleville East on the road. And the last time Collinsville swept the season series, which they have a chance to do here tonight, was the 17-18 uh, season. So we're just about ready for some basketball. I think I've given you all the information I can. Yeah, starting lineups here for Collinsville. I love the music. we got a packed gym. Student section is full. We're in for a great night of, of high school basketball. What a deal for a Tuesday night, huh? Yeah, not bad. It's a packed gym. And, of course, they're here for senior night because this is their last final for most up close personal look at Collinsville. I know we have a uh, very good following on the road as well, but for a lot of folks, this is gonna be the last time seeing them and everybody's last time seeing this particular team on this floor. Yeah, you've got uh, star sprinter Jamarion Stewart over there doing toe touches. Crowd's going crazy. This is a great atmosphere for high school basketball. Oh, Jamarion just did the split. Wow, how that about that? That almost hurt me just watching it. Man, oh man. All right, well, we're just about ready for some basketball here, folks. As soon as we get any more updates coming from O'Fallon, of course, we'll pass those along to you. At last check, they were up by two at the end of one. My name is Todd Duke, Dr. Chris McCluskey on the other microphone, and we have Zach Roseman over here who is getting ready to man the camera through the first half of this game. Yeah, we appreciate Mr. Roseman over there. He does a great job behind the lens when he's not uh, – doing his band duties and his student section duties. He's a great student here at Collinsville. Yeah, man, member of the, uh, I think, the uh, Scholar Bowl and 
math something or other and band and he helps me out he's the team manager for the softball lady softball team so uh, yeah it's going to be a uh, different year without him oh we didn't turn away too soon all right just about ready to go ball is tipped up and it is won by Belleville East and Eric Wade remember Eric Wade he uh set a new rebound record in the Prairie Farms Holiday Classic so he uh, is not afraid to get in there and mix it up with the big boys and get some boards. Here is a three-point shot right off the bat taken by Ethan Brown. That misses the mark. Collinsville pulls down the rebound, and we are underway. And the Cahawks have their first offensive possession here as we get going in this first quarter. There's a loose ball, though. That's picked up by Wade. And Belleville East comes back the other way, and then they, in turn, throw the ball away. Yeah, it's a good hustle by Nate Hall. He got his pocket picked. He hustled down the floor and got the ball right back. Over to Smith. On the wing, on the left side, he gets it inside, just outside the lane to KJ. Now outside the perimeter to Gelladini. Gelladini into the perimeter and then turns around and a little off balance shot, can't get it to go. Rebound belongs to KJ, put back is good. Yeah, KJ had great position. Well, he just got pushed coming down the court, so it's good to see him keeping his head. It's gonna be a physical game. It's good to see these boys playing with a lot of energy. Here is Jordan Pickett and before he can finish his drive, we have a whistle on the play. And our first foul will be handed out, and it's going to go to Rayshon Taylor, the six foot one senior. On the floor with Kawan Smith, the 5'9 senior, Nate Hall, the 6'7 junior, Laurent Gelladini, the 6'3 senior, and Kedrian Jones, the 6'7 senior. We'll pass the uh, starting roster over to you for Belleville East. That's Brandon Braxton Stacker. Sophomore hands the ball off to Brown. Brown cuts in from the right side off the glass. And Ethan Brown gets his team on the board, and we are tied at 2, 6.35 left to play here in this opening quarter. Here is Kawan Smith over on the right side now. He'll hand the ball off to Nate Hall. Hall over to the free throw line for Gelladini. Inside the perimeter, Rayshon takes the shot off the fat part of the iron. Can't get it to fall. Bodies falling everywhere, and now we're going to have a foul coming up against Belleville East. This will be their first, and it's going to go against Braxton Stacker. Yeah, Kedrian Johnson, or Jones, I'm sorry, had great position once again. If he can handle that paint, that's going to be a big bonus for this Cahawks squad. Inbound pass comes into Taylor. He drives baseline and reverse layup. I don't even know how he made that. Oh, baby, that is some Michael Jordan type stuff. He comes up on the left side, underneath the hoop, reverse on the right side for two points. Man. That happened so fast it almost made my head dizzy. Here is Stacker, he rolls in, he tries the fingertip roll. He can't get it to fall, rebound belongs to Collinsville. Cahawks bring it up, up by two they are. Collinsville, here is Rayshon Taylor. Taylor puts on a nice move off the glass, two more. Well, Rayshon Taylor came to play tonight, folks. Uh, when he can penetrate to the basket, he is hard to stop, there's no doubt about that. Here is Brown, and Brown kicks it back outside right in front of the Collinsville bench to Pickett. Pickett, the freshman, he'll launch a three, and it's a little long, and the rebound. That one is going to be handled by, finally, Wade, and he'll put up a shot. That one's no good. This time the rebound belongs to Jones for Collinsville. He'll give it up to Kawan Smith. Smith brings it up across the midcourt stripe with 5.15 left to play here in this opening quarter. In case you missed it, we're on a little bit late because the JV game went to overtime in which Collinsville lost by one. Nice move by Nate Hall. And all of a sudden, Jeff Creek wants to call a timeout. He doesn't like the way this game has started Cahawks for his are, Lancers. Cahawks are playing their brand of basketball tonight. This is what we saw all the way up to that Trinity game. You know, in a long season like this, there's some grueling time, so it's nice to see the Cahawks back in stride. 30-second timeout. We'll step aside as well. Back in just a moment on the Cahawks Sports Network. Plumbing or electrical problems? Is your AC or heater on the fritz? There are dozens of companies out there, but do you really know who you're letting in your home? Trust Tiger. Our technicians are clean cut, drug free, and background checked. What other company can make this bold statement? Our 24 hour emergency service will ensure your plumbing, heating, AC, and electric are up and running no matter what time of day it is. Schedule your appointment today. Tiger Plumbing, Heating, Air Conditioning, and Electrical Services. We earn our stripes every day. Back at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium, Todd Duke, Zach Roseman, Dr. Chris McCluskey with us here. Ethan Brown brings the ball up for Belleville East across the timeline as Collinsville leads this one by a score of eight to two. And now on the outside wing, it's Bryson Ivey. 
Ivy backs all the way up to the scorer's table and then brings the ball forward. Not a lot of room to move there. You got both Jones and Taylor outside guarding that wing, but uh, I see Ivy finds the way, but he misses the shot. KJ there with the rebound. Here comes Rayshon Taylor. Rayshon in the perimeter, all the way over onto the other side for Kawan Smith. At the end of the Belleville East bench, he brings it out and gives it up to Nate Hall. Hall on the right wing to the free throw line for Gelladini. Gelladini, spin move, drive. Hall can't get the fingertip roll to fall in. A little too hard off the glass, and it came out the other side. Yeah, it was a great move. He just failed to uh, finish, but a great move by Gelladini. And now we'll have a foul, I believe, coming up for Eric Wade to go to the free throw line. You know, something notable here, I think Kedry and Jones may have four rebounds already. I got the team down for five. You might be right. He might have four quarter. of them. I mean, he's really owning that paint. And for these Cahawks to make a run, you know, he's going to have to uh, be the general of the paint with Aaron Moulton out with the, the foot, uh, leg, ankle issues still. K.J. is our man in the paint. They uh, dished out two fouls in that particular play. Eric Wade got called for one, and so did Kedry and Jones. So, no one shooting anything here, but Bell Bell East, they had possession of the ball, so they retain that possession. Here is Stacker. Stacker at the top of the key, gives it up into the wing for Pickett. Pickett, the freshman, battles forward, gets around Hall, but overshoots the basket. Rebound belongs to Rayshon Taylor. Collinsville brings it back up. Taylor across the line by himself with 3.50 to play here in this first quarter. And now we're gonna have a foul on a reach in by Bryce and Ivy. Ivy tried to poke that ball out five hole. Yeah. Um, Mr. Taylor was doing a little shake and bake, and uh, looks like the defender just got a little bit too close, and uh, we'll have the ball out of bounds. Mr. Nate Hall is going to be the trigger man. Three fouls on the board now for the Lancers, two for Collinsville, and here is Kawan Smith. Smith onto the wing for Gelladini. Gelladini gets the give and go for Nate Hall underneath the basket. He ran out of room and got some pressure from Stacker. So here's a shot and a snaker home by Kawan Smith. Yeah, great pull up from about 18 feet. Rimmed around the uh, rim, found the bottom of the net. That'll put the Cahawks up by eight with 320 left in the first quarter. Here is Pickett. Pickett into the corner. Here is Wade with a three-point shot. Excuse me, Ivy with a three-point shot. That wouldn't go. Kedrian Jones gets another rebound, and then he's wrestled from behind. That draws another whistle. Wade second, so he'll come out of the game, and in his place was the ZJ Hamilton. When these two teams met at Bell Bell East, it was a uh, barn burner. Collinsville led 17 to 16 after one, but then they really blew it apart in that second. Here is Rayshon with a little shot from about a foot away, and that was no good. Rebound belonged to Gelladini. He couldn't find the handle on the basketball to put it back up there. And now on the other end, Gelladini's gonna get called for a foul. Yeah, just couldn't get out of the way. And uh, nothing you can do about that foul. But a good up. hustle by the Cahawks. They're rebounding well tonight. He'll pick up his first. As I mentioned in the game at Belleville East, Collinsville led 17 to 16 after one quarter. But then the Cahawks pounded the Lancers in the second quarter, 24 to eight. And it was that quarter alone that really did the game in form because the third quarter was 13-13 and the fourth quarter was 14-13. A stacker with a nice baseline move for two for the Lancers. It's only their second bucket of this game and we're 2.30 away from ending this first quarter. And they have not been shooting the ball well. Don't expect that to last no. the entire game. Here is Gelladini, deep over on the left wing. Now to the top for Smith, now back to Gelladini. Back over to Kawan Smith. Into the corner, wide open is Rayshon Taylor, and he can't get it to fall. Rebound belongs to Belleville East. That was the first three-point shot taken tonight by Collinsville. And yeah, good look, good ball movement. Yeah. Ray was wide open. You got to take that shot, and uh, just a little off the mark. Here's Hamilton. Hamilton out toward the left wing. Now deeper into the left wing. And back to Hamilton it goes. It looks like the Cahawks are uh, kind of packing in the paint. Trying to force East to shoot the ball from the perimeter. There is Stacker out in the slot area. 1.45 to play here in this first quarter. 10 to four in favor of Collinsville. Stacker kicks it out into the corner. And a dribble drive from Hamilton, or excuse me, Ivy, and that ball is stripped out of his hands, and then Hamilton gets it, but the foul is gonna be on the floor, and it's gonna go against Rayshon Taylor. That'll be his second. 
Yeah, Ray just caught himself up in the air, and he just came down on the uh, Belleville East uh, offensive player. Again, one of those deals, nothing you can do about it. Really, wrong place, wrong time. Here comes our pregame interviewee into the game, Logan Carlisle. It was a pleasure talking to him. He's a great young man. He's going to do a lot of good things in life. Great student, good kid, musician, well-rounded kid. Move on the inside is Pickett from the baseline. Shot is a little bit short, nothing but white jerseys down there. Yeah, With Carlisle the comes in and gets a rebound right off the bat. Collinsville keeps their six-point lead and a chance to add on to it. 70 seconds left to play here in this first quarter. Here is Smith, a floater, can't get it to go. Put back won't work for KJ. And then the rebound belongs to Bell Bell East. And here comes Stacker. He'll take it all the way down, dump it off in the corner. Ivy for three, yes. Well, Collinsville's gone cold, and East answers with a few points to make this more of a ball game here as we approach the end of the first quarter. Here is Carlisle with 45 seconds left to play. In this first quarter, over to Gelladini from Smith. Back to Smith with his feet at midcourt in the Cahawk logo. Cross court it goes to Carlisle. Out front now to Smith, 30 seconds left. All the way at the midcourt stripe is where the play takes place as Collinsville is going to play for the last shot. Into Nate Hall at the free throw line. Hall backs it up to midcourt once again as we approach 15 seconds left to play here in this first quarter. Here is Gelladini. Dribbled it a couple of times, gives it to Smith. 10 seconds to go. Smith bounces it to Gelladini. Gelladini over to Carlisle for three. Yes! Great set play. We overload the left side of the court. Everybody forgets about Logan Carlisle, the senior from the wing, and he drains a three-point shot to put Collinsville up 12-7. to seven. At the end of one quarter of play, and Belle Belle East couldn't hit the buzzer beater at the end of that quarter, so Collinsville takes a 12 to seven advantage into quarter number two, and we're back with that quarter in just a moment on the Cahawk Sports Network. Ogle Auctions in Collinsville, the newest in online auctioning. Go to ogleauctionshighbid.com, that's H-I-Bid.com, to check out what's up for bid in the next auction. Ogle Auctions deals with everyday items like board games, t-shirts, and more, to collectibles, whether that is a vehicle, vinyl records, or vintage toys. Or how about a trolley car? And Ogle Auctions is always on the lookout for more items. Check out their next online auction at ogleauctionshighbid.com. That's ogleauctionshibid.com. Or call Kim Ogle today at 618-980-4530. Back here at Collinsville High School at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. Todd Duke, Zach Roseman, Dr. Chris McCluskey with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. After one quarter of play here, 12 to seven in favor of Collinsville. After two quarters of play in O'Fallon, Edwardsville has the lead now at 21 to 16 over the Panthers. And remember, if Edwardsville can beat the Panthers and we take care of our business here tonight, Collinsville will be outright champions of the Southwestern Conference. The last time I was an Edwardsville basketball fan, but uh, tonight, I know, huh? tonight we'll, we'll give it a run, huh? Yeah, gotta find yourself rooting for the enemy every once in a while. <laughs> Here is KJ, nice uh, ball handling skills there by Collinsville. And as soon as I said that, they turned the ball over. Only their second one. Yeah, KJ just went up a little strong off the back of the iron. Uh, back down the court, goes east to try to bring this game a little bit closer once again. 12-7 in favor of Collinsville. We're just underway here in quarter number two. Here is Stacker. Stacker breaks into the paint, kicks it back outside into the corner, and now he and shot the ball a little bit too hard. I don't think that hit anything. And then a stacker gets the rebound and turns around and banks it off the glass for two. Yeah, a little frustrating failure to box out. You know, we had position, but uh, we didn't put our bottom into stacker, and he came up with the rebound. They're double teaming everybody that gets the ball here. Yeah, Bell now Bell East, East is. is picking up their heat. They got two yep. steals in a row. Yeah, they do. And that one's going to turn into, well, nope, not yet. Missed layup it turned into. That's exactly right. So, Collinsville uh, Boyd's giving up a couple of points on a turnover. And now, you Got a mismatch down low with Kedrian Jones. There is Carlisle, he has that pass blocked and bounces it back over to Gelladini. Inside to KJ, outside to Kawan Smith. From the wing, no, that rolls right across the basket. Rebound belongs to Belleville East. They throw it all the way up to Bryson Ivy, and Ivy is fouled by Gelladini, and that'll be Lawrence second. 
Yeah, the last three possessions, Belleville East is uh, outrunning Collinsville. Looks like at the quarter, coach said, run, boys, run, and let's see if we can turn this into a game of speed. 6.24 to play, and at the free throw line, it is Bryson Ivey, a 60.9% free throw shooter. He becomes the first free throw shooter of this game. And he misses. Did they not give Logan Carlisle a three-pointer at the end of the uh, at the end of the quarter? I just got a text that asked, was yeah, that because not a I three? had to change my uh, I had to change my score because I had it at 13, and then I noticed the scoreboard had it at 12. So I'm guessing it was just a two-pointer. Maybe his foot was on the line, and we just couldn't see it. I guess that's correct. Could have been on the tape as Ivy hits one. And now Collinsville brings the ball back up court. 6.15 left to play here in the second quarter. Here is Rayshon Taylor in front of the scorer's table. Breaks out of a double team and sends it over on the wing for Carlisle. Carlisle gets caught on the baseline. Throws it back out to Kwan Smith. Back to Carlisle. Bluffs the three. Out to Smith from the free throw line. Can't get it to go. Yeah, good ball movement by Collinsville. That's what you have to do when you're getting pressured heavily on defense is just keep the ball moving and they can't catch up with the ball. Yeah, the scoreboard up there has him in only two points also. So, yeah, was yeah. not a three-pointer. He must have been on the line. That's Here is Braxton Stacker, and Stacker has that shot partially blocked. Rayshon Taylor picks up the loose rock, brings it forward. Kedrian Jones gets fouled from behind, and boy, oh, boy, that ball just felt like going in, didn't it? Very nice. Collinsville gets outrun. They come right back and say, no, 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 boys. Speed is our game. And uh, big Kedrian Jones ran the floor well. Great pass, man. I'll tell you what, Rayshon Taylor has a knack for throwing that ball up the court, almost like a quarterback with accurate precision. Jones at the free throw line, and his one and only shot falls through as Kedrian came in as a 62.1% free throw shooter on the year. I saw that stat, and it really surprised me because it seems like he's been better than that this year. Maybe when it counts, he knocks him down. I'm not sure. Eric Wade checks back into the game for Belleville East, as does Ethan Brown. And Brown is the one with the ball up court. On to the right wing. He gets around Kawan Smith and then backs out of the perimeter. Picks up his dribble. Almost lost the ball, but it falls into Wade's hands. He'll turn around take a shot from about nine feet away. That won't fall. And the rebound belongs to Rayshon Taylor. He races up the court. Off the glass. Oh, counted. Baby. Used his body to block the defender up off the glass at full speed. It's amazing to have a touch that soft when you're going full speed down the floor. Rayshon at the free throw line, 73.5% on the year for Mr. Taylor, and he makes that look easy. Yeah, great touch from the free throw line. All of a sudden, it's an eight-point game again. Uh, for Collinsville, they did a great job of withstanding that little run he's made. They did. Collinsville had a five-point lead at the end of one, and now it's stretched to eight here with five minutes to go. In quarter number two, and they kick the ball outside to Wade, over onto the wing for Ivy. Ivy steps up inside the perimeter, takes the shot, can't get it to go, and a rebound belongs to Belleville East, and then off the glass, Eric Wade picks up his first two points of this game. Great athletic move by Wade, staying with it, going up off the glass. There's Rayshon. And Taylor over to Smith. Well, I know that Rayshon's so happy to have that record out of the way. Now he can just concentrate on playing some ball. You can almost see it in the, in the way he's carrying himself. Yeah, you could see it after he scored that bucket at Belleville West the other night. He just looked more at ease. Here is Rayshon. He runs his face right into the chest of Eric Wade, but Wade was the last one to touch it, so Collinsville will get to keep it. And Taylor is the trigger man, gets it into Kawan Smith. Skeet takes it from the left wing out toward the top of the key. 520, excuse me, 420 to go here in the second quarter. Turnaround shot from just underneath for Kedrian Jones. And Collinsville extends that lead out to eight once again. Yeah, great baby hook. KJ's tried that a couple times tonight. It finally fell for him. There is Ethan Brown. Brown across the timeline, works his way over to the left wing where he hands the ball off to Pickett. Pickett brings it all the way out toward midcourt. Dribbles, drives into the perimeter and takes a shot from an off-balance angle. Can't get it to go. Rebound belongs to Kedrian Jones. And then oh. he turns the ball over. 
Man. Great rebound, but he got his pocket pick. Hey, heads up move by the uh, Belleville East defender. You got to tip your hat on that one. That was Jordan Pickett, the freshman. who's have seen a lot of playing time on the varsity level as a freshman. Has those Pickett jeans, I guess. Is his older brother. Uh, uh, yeah. Playing for Mizzou now. Yes, Javion Pickett. Into the corner it goes for Smith. I thought I, I expected a lot better out of Mizzou this year. I really did. But oh boy, don't get me started, Todd. That's I know. where I went to school. I know, and, man. Uh, frustrating few years here. Here is Eric Wade with a fingertip drive through the lane, and now Coach Lee doesn't like what he's been seeing lately, so he is going to take a timeout, and we will take a timeout right along with him, and we're back in just a moment here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Looking to buy a new home or sell your current one? Trust the Blaylock team of Keller Williams Marquee Realty with all of your real estate needs. The real estate market is hot right now. Trust the Blaylock team of Keller Williams Marquee to help you find the perfect home or to help you get top dollar for your current home. Give Peyton or Emily Blaylock a call today at 618-780-4622 or visit them online at blaylockteam.com or on Facebook at The Blaylock Team. Todd Duke, Dr. Chris McCluskey, and Zach Roseman back with you from Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. 2.58 left to play here in this first half. Collinsville with now a four-point lead. They had an eight-point lead a couple of times, but Bell Bell East uh, took advantage of a little run there and took advantage of a moment of sloppiness for Collinsville, but we'll hope that's done. K.J. waits. He's fouled, and Kedrine Jones is heading back to the free throw line where he is already one for one. This one's going to go against Eric Wade. That's going to be his third. Yeah, you got to give East credit for hanging around. I think they're getting outplayed, but they've got a couple nice little uh, pickpocket steals, and uh, they ran the floor a couple times well, and that's what's kept them in the game. Eric Wade in early foul trouble, though. He has three fouls here in this first half as Kedrian hits another one from the free throw line, and he's got one more coming his way. I like to see Logan Carlisle getting quite a bit of playing time here on senior night. He's worked yes. his tail off for his career, and you know, he deserves to be in there. Mm. KJ misses the second one. And here come the Belleville East Lancers, and that is Ethan Brown once again. He works his way over in front of the Kayhawk bench and then gets tripped at the top of the key by KJ, and then he can't keep his feet. Skeet pokes it out of there, but it was a tipped ball, so no backcourt violation. And now here is Hamilton with it. Hamilton hands the ball off to Ivy. He'll try a three from deep in the corner and he'll hit it. That's the second three-pointer that Bryson Ivy has hit in this contest. And just like that, it's a two-point game once again. I'm telling you, East is hanging around. You, you've got to give him credit and Collins is going to have to keep playing well. I think pounding the paint is going to be a good idea. Get the ball back in Taylor's hands and they're going to halftime with the lead. There is Rayshon over on the right wing. Back over to the left side, now into the corner for Logan Carlisle, and around the horn we go once again. Rayshon, back to Carlisle in the corner. Logan, back over to Rayshon, but reading that all the way was Ethan Brown, and now we're gonna have a foul called against Kawan Smith. Yeah, you're just not gonna be able to throw a cross-court pass against the speed of Belleville East, so that'll be a lesson learned. Yeah, Probably. Can't, can't lob that up in the air and have it sit up in the air for no. 15 seconds. No, 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 no. So Logan Carlisle to the bench and Nate Hall comes back in. Collinsville with some height out there now with Hall, Jones, and Granger. And here with the ball is Bryson Ivey, the 6'1 junior for Belleville East. Over onto the opposite wing now for Pickett. Pickett hands the ball off into the corner and that's Brown. Brown spins and tries to work his way into the perimeter and Kawan Smith is like, not today. Gives it up now for Ivey and into the corner. A dribble drive by Pickett, and then a handoff to Brown. Brown's shot from the point won't fall in, and the rebound belongs to Collinsville. Hayhawks bring it back up. Here is Rayshon Taylor. Oh, what a nice head fake. Turns it around and gives it to Nate Hall, who gives to Smith at the free throw line. And now back out to Hall and into Granger. Back to Hall on the right wing for three. High arcing shot, good. Very nice. I tell you what, when Nate Hall's three-point ball is on, that is a huge added dimension for this Kayhawk squad. 24-19, Collinsville goes back up by five. 45 seconds left to play here in this first half. K 
Cafe Agape halftime show coming up in just a moment. There's a nice steal by Collinsville. Here's up to Rayshon, and Rayshon will take it off the glass. No good. Kedrian Jones gets the rebound and then gets it slapped right out of his hands. Yeah, Rayshon thought about dunking it. He didn't have quite the run, and by that time it was too late to switch to a, to a layup. Just one of those kind of comedic plays. Uh, but uh, the good news is Collinsville retains possession. I was just getting ready to tell everybody coming up on the uh, Cafe Agape halftime show. Of course, we'll have the stats and the scores for you. We're also going to talk things over with Collinsville. Former, I just got to get used to saying that, former Lady Kayok head basketball coach, Lori Billy, is going to join us. Here is Jelladini out in the slot area, offset over on the left wing. 25 seconds to go here in this first half. Here is a pass out to Rayshon, and Rayshon with 20 seconds left. Gives it up to Smith and gets it right back. 24-19, five-point lead for Collinsville. And here we come on 10 seconds left in this half. Here is Smith. Smith over on the right wing, picks it up, gives it to Nate Hall. His shot won't fall in. And the rebound knocked out of bounds by Kadrian Jones. And that was not enough time to do anything with it. And the clock hits zero. So we hit the halftime show brought to you by Cafe Agape. Cafe Agape. And I told you what, folks, you want some good food, Cafe Agape will take care of you. They have burgers the size of your head. They have pork steaks the size of your arm. They have meatloaf the size of your forearm and all kinds of other wonderful sides to go along with it as well. Give them a call whether you're hungry for just you and your missus or your mister or if you would like to... Uh, Cater something, small business meeting, large business meeting, maybe a wedding, 345 Cafe is the number to call. That's 345-2233. We'll talk things over with Collinsville Coach Lori Billy in just a moment on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Cafe Agape serves up some of the best sandwiches, burgers, pork steaks, meatloaf, and more in Collinsville. And yes, they do catering. Wedding receptions, luncheons, business meetings, and more. And Cafe Agape is your destination for all of your holiday and party favorites, both main courses and delicious sides. Cafe Agape, check them out at 703 St. Louis Road, or check out the Lunch Buffet at the Columbus Plaza location on 157 in Collinsville. Call Cafe Agape at 345-CAFE, 345-2233. Yes, they still cater. Cafe Agape, that's some good eats. And we welcome you back to Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. Halftime here, 24-19 in favor of your Collinsville Cahawk boys basketball team. And joining us now, again, I got to get used to saying this, former Lady Cahawk basketball coach Lori <laughs> Billy. Yeah, that sounds really weird. It does. It sounds weird to say. Does it sound weird to hear? It's, it's, it hurts a little bit. So, yeah, I bet yeah. it does. Uh, so I am uh, sorry that we could not bring your game to the masses the other night. I do apologize for that. I've already apologized to everybody else. So... I'll apologize to you, but... Uh, no apologies necessary. You do an amazing job, and we appreciate all that you've done for us, so thank you. Well, thank you very much, and you know, I was thinking about this. I'm like, we almost mirror each other here, except for I'm not going anywhere, but your second year as the head girls basketball coach was our first year doing this, so we've kind of grown into, the, grown into this together. Correct. Yeah, I mean, it's been a great partnership, and um, I, we're lucky to have you. Uh, there are not many communities that have this kind of service, and so... Uh, it's vital and it's important, and I know there are a lot of people out there that, that spend their time watching the games at home, the comfort of their own home when they can't get here, and it's it's uh, it's great to have. So Thank keep you very it up. much. Thank you very much. All right, let's uh, talk about your girls, man. You, you gave Edwardsville everything they can handle from what I hear Friday night in that championship game. Tell us a little bit about it. It was a great game. I told the girls afterward, I said, if I could script a game, I would script it just like this, except in the end, we'd have the win. Yeah. Um, you know, they... We were up 13, and at that point, I, I it kind of hit me like this is a reality. We, you know, we keep playing like this. We're going to be, we're going to be in a in a, in a sectional, and um, it just uh, second half we we maintained the lead, and uh, fourth quarter we were tied, and then we went up, and then they went up, and our shots kind of went cold, and theirs didn't. Um, and you know, despite the 50-40 final, it was a really close game all the way through. We had to foul at the end, and. Uh, but the kids left it all on the floor, and that's all you can ask of them. So. And then you uh, went out last night to uh, the sectional uh, game between O'Fallon and Edwardsville, and tell me what you thought about that one when it, it was over. It was a, it was a game. Uh, again, it was kind of a mirror of our game 
and then Edwardsville went up and they were up 13 as well. And I thought, oh, here we go. You know, they're going to take off and go. I'm going to be leaving early because it's game, game over. And O'Fallon never quit. I mean, they just kept clawing back in and clawing back in. And they got a, an amazing guard. Um, their point guard is just fantastic, Kayla. And, and she didn't quit. She just went at him and she said, okay, um, I'm going to put the team on my back and here I go. And they ended up winning by three. And it was it was amazing. It was an amazing finish and just an amazing game. Now, I know that you and Lori Blade are friends. You guys have been doing this for a long, long time, and I know nobody ever wishes ill of their friends in any endeavor of their life, but was it a little satisfying to see Edwardsville lose? You know, people ask me that today a couple of times, and I, you're right. Lori and I are good friends, and I have I have been so thankful for her over the years. And, and you know, Nick Nohoff and I are good friends, and so it's tough when you're watching two of, you know, of your friends, of your colleagues play against each other. And, yeah, it, it was satisfying in that Edwardsville has had so many opportunities to go on, and finally somebody else from the Southwestern Conference had a chance to go. So it was a, it was a tough one. It was a yeah, tough one to watch. I hope, I hope O'Fallon didn't spend all of it in their Edwardsville win. Yeah, and, you know, it's I, I'm i not sure. Believe it or not, I didn't have time to check today, but uh, if they're playing, uh, I think it's Joliet West, I think was who they were going to end up playing. Yeah. And that's going to be a tough one for them. But they, if they play like they did last night, they'll be okay. Are you going to have any kind of hand or say so whatsoever in the hiring of your replacement? Well, you know, I I think so. I think uh, Coach Smith has we're gonna we've, they've got the job posted and they're gonna have it open until the 13th of March, and then once they do that, Coach had said, you know, I want your input on on our candidates and and uh, I you know I would be honored to to have that opportunity. I was honored to watch you do your thing for the last nine years. I know you did it for 10, but I got to watch for nine. So right. thank you once again. You were always very cordial, and I appreciate it. Thank you, Todd. Thank you. Thank that you is so much. Former Lady Cahawk head basketball coach Lori Billy. We're going to take a break, and when we come back, we will, uh, of course, check the scoreboard and bring you the stats of this game here, and we'll do that next on the Cafe Agape Halftime Show here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Cafe Agape serves up some of the best sandwiches, burgers, pork steaks, meatloaf, and more in Collinsville. And yes, they do catering. Wedding receptions, luncheons, business meetings, and more. And Cafe Agape is your destination for all of your holiday and party favorites, both main courses and delicious sides. Cafe Agape, check them out at 703 St. Louis Road, or check out the lunch buffet at the Columbus Plaza location on 157 in Collinsville. Call Cafe Agape at 345-CAFE, 345-2233. Yes, they still cater. Cafe Agape, that's some good eats. Pace Design and Construction in Maryville. Whether building a new home, making an addition to the home you currently own, or finally getting around to that remodeling job you've been putting off, Pace Design and Construction in Maryville can help. Pace Design and Construction is a building and remodeling contractor you can trust. They provide the highest quality, they are dedicated to their customers, and are committed to completing your project on time and within budget. Pace Design and Construction in Maryville. Give them a call at 618-407-5466, online at PaceDesignConstruct.com, or on Facebook at Pace Construction Design. The Collinsville Education Association is a proud supporter of KHOCSports.com and the KHOC Sports Network. The CEA is your partner as they work to ensure quality education for our children. The CEA advocates excellence and equity in public education and represent over 400 educators in 11 schools in both Madison and St. Clair counties. For more information, you can visit the Collinsville Education Association's Facebook page or the CEA's website at CollinsvilleCEA.org.
Cafe Agape serves up some of the best sandwiches, burgers, pork steaks, meatloaf, and more in Collinsville. And yes, they do catering. Wedding receptions, luncheons, business meetings, and more. And Cafe Agape is your destination for all of your holiday and party favorites, both main courses and delicious sides. Cafe Agape, check them out at 703 St. Louis Road, or check out the Lunch Buffet at the Columbus Plaza location on 157 in Collinsville. Call Cafe Agape at 345-CAFE, 345-2233. Yes, they still cater. Cafe Agape, that's some good eats. Once again, we welcome you back into uh, Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. We're just about ready here for the third quarter to begin. And here's a look at your leaders right now. Kedrian Jones leading all players with eight points in this one. Rayshon Taylor has seven on the other side. That's what Bryson Ivey has as he leads his team from Belleville East. Collinsville went three for four from the free throw line while the Lancers went one of two. Speaking of one of two, Collinsville went that from the three point line while Belleville East went two of four. As Collinsville had a 12 7 lead after one quarter of play, and they remain with that five point lead as both teams scored 12 points in that second quarter. And in the fourth quarter now at O'Fallon High School, it is O'Fallon 34 and Edwardsville 30 as we uh, check the scoreboard along the way. So we're uh, sure that that game will probably end before this one does because this one got started a little late since our JV game went into overtime. So. Uh, we'll check on that one periodically for you, and we'll bring you updates whenever we have them. And, of course, when the uh, game's a final, we will uh, bring them up there for you as well. We are underway here in this fourth, or excuse me, third quarter, 7.45 to go. We're just 15 seconds in, and here is Bryson Ivey with a bounce pass to Brown. Brown for three, and that one is good. Back up the other end of the court we go, and here is Rayshon Taylor outside to KJ. KJ dumps it off to Geladini and then to Smith on the outside wing, and Smith has that one bounce high off of the rim and into the hands of the Lancers, and the Lancers bring it back up. We're waiting for Zach Roseman to come back from his band duty, so we apologize, and Collinsville gets the rebound. Rayshon Taylor brings it up on under, underhand roll, and that one won't fall, and it looks like Rayshon's gonna go to the free throw line. Yeah, Ray did a great job of holding up. Belleville East defender was set up for a charge and Ray just slowed his roll and uh, did a great job of avoiding the charge. Looks like the foul was on the floor. So he'll inbound to KJ. Ball that was the uh, second one for Ethan Brown. First foul here in this second half. And with 7.07 to go, Collinsville has a two point lead. Here is the inbound pass to Rayshon Taylor into the backcourt from Nate Hall. Rayshon across the line, works his way to the top of the key. He'll hand it off there to Smith. Smith with a bouncer over to Gelladini, who gives it up to Hall, who gives it inside, and KJ can't get it to fall, and then another foul coming up uh, against Belleville East. Yeah, KJ went up a little strong off the glass, but credit him for staying after it and grabbing another offensive rebound. That's, that's a, a hard-earned possession right there by Kedrian Jones. Pickett picks up his second foul. Now Belleville East with two fouls here in this second half. As Gelladini prepares to trigger the inbound pass and does so to Ray Schott. Taylor from the right wing into the paint. Now we're gonna have a foul the other way and this one's gonna go against KJ. Moving screen on Mr. Jones. Which is unfortunate because Ray had a open lane to the basket. Maybe it was because of the moving screen. At any rate, East will bring the ball down the floor. The Lancers do that in the form of Ethan Brown. Brown being shadowed there by Kawan Smith, and now Kawan's going to get called for a foul. That's good tight defense. The uh, East guard kind of flew his head up and maybe made it look like a little more contact than it was. Inbound pass comes into Brown. And Brown over onto the far side wing right in front of the Lancers bench. And that was Jordan Pickett who brings it around. And now Brown with it. Shot from the top of the key. That one bounces off the rim. And a volley for the rebound. Put back up by Eric Wade. This time the rebound spins right into the hands of Stacker. And now a whistle. And it looks like this one's going to go against Kedrian Jones as well. Yeah, just unfortunate. No, nope, it's going to go against Hall. 
We had four defenders in the paint, one Belleville East Lancer, and he came down with the offensive rebound. So all of a sudden, the Cayhawks have three fouls to the Lancers, two. And now the Lancers will inbound, and they'll do so underneath of their own basket, and it'll be Brown with the honors. He'll, he'll put it up under the wing for Bryson Ivey. Ivey tries to drive around a couple of Cayhawks, and Jelladini and Smith were both there, and then a rebound foul. This one is going to go to the other 15, Bryson Ivey. Yeah, great hustle by Jelladini. He's playing a lot stronger basketball now in his senior year, which we really like to see. Inbound pass comes in to Kawan Smith from Jelladini. And the Cayhawks work the ball back up court. 24-22. So far, we've just had the we've just had the Ethan Brown three-pointer. And that's it. Here is Rayshon Taylor. Taylor over onto the far side now for Kawan Smith. Smith. And just outside, bounce pass back to Smith from Jones. Can't get it to fall. More hustle by KJ, <coughs> keeping the ball alive. We have a jump ball call, possession arrow in favor of Collinsville, so the Cayhawks will get to keep it. Uh, KJ keeps working like that. He's going to get rewarded with some buckets. He is really, really showing a lot of effort and hustle in the paint tonight. 5.45 left to play here in quarter number three. Jelladini with the inbound pass. Does so to Nate Hall. Hall just inside the perimeter, drives baseline, and then throws it off of a Lancer and out of bounds. Mr. Gurley down there playing ball boy for a second. <laughs> Inbound pass again handled by Jelladini. Throws it into Hall. Hall with a head fake. Baseline, no room to move. And he gives it outside now to Rayshon Taylor. Taylor dribbles his way into the paint, takes the off-balance shot, but he's fouled, and Rayshon will go to the line. And once again, when Ray goes into the air, it's like he has a hot air balloon above him. I mean, he just hangs and hangs and hangs, and that's really what drew that foul from the East Lancer. Third foul for Ethan Brown. So he joins Eric Wade in the three foul department, and Rayshon up at the line. Hits his first one. Rayshon now two of two from the free throw line here tonight. Yeah, an old adage in basketball is layups and free throws, right? Yeah, that's the first point scored here in this third quarter for Collinsville. We have 532 left to play in this quarter. And Rayshon takes care of both free throws. And a whistle before the inbound pass could even come in. We're going to call Jelladini. I think he said he grabbed a hold of the defender, possibly. What was he defending? Nothing was happening yet. <laughs> Inbound pass coming in from Stacker. Stacker bounces the ball into Jordan Pickett. Pickett brings it up court, splits right between Jelladini and Jones, and Pickett almost lost control of that ball. Throws it up over to Wade, and now a pass to Brown. Back out to Stacker. Stacker from the wing, throws it in for three. And then a timeout called by Belleville East, so we will take a timeout as well. Collinsville leads by one point, and we are back in just a mere 60 seconds here on the Cayhawks Sports Network. Code 3 Barbecue Supply, home of Code 3 Spices, is first responder owned by proud Cayhawk alums. Located at 302 East Main Street, Code 3 Barbecue Supply is your home for one-of-a-kind everything barbecue headquarters, providing the best American-made barbecue grills, smokers, rubs, sauces, accessories, and cooking expertise from professional barbecue experts. Code 3 Spices provides award-winning rubs and sauces and donates 25 cents a unit sold to first responder and military organizations to aid the fallen and assist with suicide prevention and PTSD awareness. Stop on by. See the guys at Code 3 Barbecue Supply for all of your cooking and grilling needs. Code 3 Barbecue Supply home of the Memphis in May first place world champion Patriot sauce. Learn more about their products and mission in giving back to those who serve at Code3Spices.com. Back at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium, Todd Duke, Dr. Chris McCluskey back with you as we are back in the third quarter with 5.09 left to play. And here is Rayshon Taylor in front of his own bench. Taylor back over to Jelladini who gets it to Kawan Smith. Now deeper into the wing for Nate Hall. Back out to Smith and back to Hall on the right wing. 
Smith to the top of the key and all the way back into the left corner. Rayshon for three. That one falls a little short. And then the rebound falls right down into the hands of Eric Wade. And then the Lancers bring the ball back up. Here's a three-point try from Stacker. That one misses the mark. And now the ball knocked out of bounds. Last touch by Collinsville. So the Lancers will get to keep the ball, and they'll inbound from in front of their own bench. Yeah, a couple quick three-point tries by the Lancers. Looks like they're going to try to take advantage of us letting them hang around, score some quick buckets. So Collinsville is going to have to box out well and rebound. There is Wade with the ball. Excuse me, Brown. Now to Wade. And now over here on the wing to Ivy. Ivy backs up toward the midcourt stripe. 4.20 left to play here in this third quarter. 26-25, Cahawks up by one. There is a stacker shot off the glass that won't fall. Rayshon is there with the rebound. And Taylor brings it back up, pumps it over to Smith. Smith from about 10 feet out, can't get it to go. And the rebound falls right down into the hands of Wade. Who gets the stacker? Who takes it in for the slam? Well, I had a hunch East Coach was going to tell them to run again. That's what they did in the second quarter. Uh, so Council is going to have to run the floor. First time tonight that the Lancers have a lead. 27 to 26, one point advantage for Belleville East. Yeah, East took Collinsville out of our game a little bit here in the third quarter. Took some outside shots. I think we need to keep pounding the paint. We took good shots, we just missed layups. But those layups will fall if we'll stick with them. Now a timeout called on the floor, so we'll step aside as well. It's another 60 second timeout. So we're back in just a moment on the Cahawk Sports Network. Something old can be something new again. The old Herald Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville proves that old adage right one more time. Derek and Whitney Reiser, along with brewmaster and distillery operator Torin O'Brien, Old Herald Brewery and Distillery is not just a place to eat and drink, but more of a must-experience destination in the St. Louis area. With its Collinsville Herald newspaper feel, Old Herald Brewery and Distillery features a restaurant, a tap room, and of course, a state-of-the-art, one-of-a-kind distillery. Old Herald Brewery and Distillery can handle all of your group functions, as well with an event space that can handle you and 79 of your friends for any large gathering. And the food, well, simply amazing with local and new favorites, plus brunch on Sundays. How about bocce ball or bags on the patio? Old Harold Brewery and Distillery in Collinsville, 115 East Clay Street in Collinsville. Give them a call at 855-8027, online at oldheraldbrewing.com, or on Facebook at Old Harold. Back here at Collinsville High School, I'm Todd Duke. Dr. Chris McCluskey's on the other microphone. Zach Roseman is finished with his band duties and has come back up to man the camera. I bet you're all glad about that because I know that I don't do a very good job at it. Giladini's going to get called for his fourth foul. Well, there goes Belleville East running the floor again. I'm telling you, they're going to try to speed this game up, so Collins will better be ready for it. Lancers with a one-point lead. Giladini goes to the bench. David Granger comes in in his place. To the free throw line, it'll be Ethan Brown. His first trip to the charity stripe tonight, and he is a 61.9% free throw shooter on the year is Brown. And he rolls the first one in. There's gonna be a big three and a half minutes left in the third period for Collinsville to not uh, let Belleville fill the lead. Missed on that one, and Jones is there with the rebound for the Cahawks. He gives it up to Taylor, and Taylor brings it back across to Smith, and then Smith will bring it across the line. Three and a half minutes to go here in this third quarter. 28-26, Lancers by two. Into the corner it goes for Nate Hall. Hall at the end of his bench gives it up to Taylor. Taylor, Taylor drives into the perimeter and then does a spin rama and loses the ball in the process. Six turnover for Collinsville in this game. And now Stacker is going to be... Well, they're going to call a timeout while Stacker still had control of the ball. This is a 30-second timeout called by Belleville East, so we'll step aside for that long as well. And we're back in just a moment here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Brady Pest and Termite Management in Caseyville. Brady Pest and Termite Management is your local pest control source. The Midwest offers its fair share of pest problems, and Brady Pest and Termite Management is up to the challenge. Whether it's pesky rodents in the cold winter months or ants, spiders, and other pests in the warm months. Brady Pest and Termite is your solution. And termites, 
Brady Pest is tops in the Metro East in termite management. Do you have unwanted pests? Then call the best. Brady Pest and Termite Management in Caseyville. Call 343-1790 or on Facebook at Brady Pest and Termite. Back at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium, Lancers with the lead by two and the ball. In front of his own bench and now back over here is Braxton Stacker. Stacker on the left wing. Dribbles, drives in the perimeter, fingertip roll, no good. Rebound popped all the way up in the air and it's Nate Hall who comes down with it. Collinsville brings it up court. Here is Rayshon. Rayshon into the perimeter, spin move, off the glass, good for two. Man, what a move by Rayshon. Left hand against two defenders, spin move and somehow has the awareness to go right up off of the square into the bucket. We are tied at 28. Here is Stacker. Over onto this side now, and a dribble drive. Kicked it back outside. Three-point shot for Ivy, Ivy. Excuse me. That one misses. And there is Jones with another rebound. He's got to have about 10 rebounds tonight. Oh, what a nice play by Kawan Smith, coast to coast. Yeah, he goes in with the right hand on the left side, comes around with the left hand above a much taller defender. Big run for Collinsville. Like I said, it's a big couple minutes of this game. Here is Stacker. Stacker in the slot over this way for Ivy. Ivy from the left wing. He takes it out to the top of the key where he gives it up for Hamilton. Now back out in front of the Belleville bench to Stacker. He'll launch a three from the wing. No good. And the rebound knocked out of bounds by Kedrian Jones. No. They're going to say it went off of the head of Braxton Stacker. And Collinsville will get the ball back. Yeah, the thing I liked about that, our guys were really boxing out hard on that play. Uh, and that's so good to see. Uh, in a game where Belleville is showing that they're going to shoot a lot of shots. Here is Hall in front of the scorer's table. He is double teamed all of a sudden, so Granger is wide open and gets the ball on the right wing. Back out to Smith at midcourt, and then Smith works his way over to that same wing. He gets double teamed. Bounce pass to Taylor inside to outside, and Smith ends up back with it from Jones. Smith all the way back out to midcourt. And foul. This one looks like it's going to belong to Zion Thomas. Zion Thomas comes into the game for the first time tonight and picks up a foul, does the five foot eight senior. Yeah, he was playing pretty good defense. I think he just got his hands a little bit too close to Kawan's waist and got tagged for the touch foul. Here is Taylor out to midcourt for Smith. One arm shovel pass back over to Taylor and over the head a pass back to Smith. Free throw line for Hall on the wing for Taylor. He's in and then he kicks it back out to Hall and Hall is fouled by Bryson Ivey, and that'll be Ivey's third foul. Yeah, Collinsville's got a big lineup in the game. I like the way they're back to moving the ball around. They've caught stride. They're playing their game again. I think as long as we do that, you'll probably see us extend the six or eight point lead here. Nate Hall will inbound right at the end of his bench to Taylor, who gets it into Smith. 105 left to play here in this third quarter. Here is Jones into the corner. Double team gets it out onto the wing for Smith. And Kawan rolls out to the top of the key. Gives it up over onto the left side wing now for Taylor. Back to Smith. And a inside pass to Jones. He tries to work his way in the paint, and he is fouled. And this one is going to go against Eric Wade, and that's going to be his fourth. Wow, Belleville at least really racking up the fouls all of a sudden here at the end of oh, the third quarter. Oh, they called period. that one against Hamilton. Wade got lucky. Wade was the one down there complaining. He looked like it was called against him, but referee said no. Here is KJ at the line. He is two of three and now sinks that one. Adrian Jones ready for one more from the free throw line. And it's good. Collinsville, after trailing by two just a moment ago, back out in front by four. 32, 28, 45 seconds to play here in this third. Here is Pickett. Pickett gets the ball over to Hamilton. Hamilton out to Wade. Wade back over to Hamilton on the wing. He bluffed the three, takes it baseline, fingertip roll, good. Yeah, Nate Hall gave up the baseline. Coach Darren Lee not happy about that. Uh, but at any rate, that's a big bucket by East. Sure is. What could be a, could have been a six-point game, now a two-point game. Here is Kawan Smith. He just zigzags his way in the perimeter well, across sure the does. lane and everything, <laughs> man. He probably touched every inch of that floor on that possession. Here is Taylor in front of the Kayhawk bench. Rayshon, nine seconds left. Gets it over to Nate Hall. Back to Taylor. Taylor launches a three. Oh, that just rolled off. 
Rebound belongs to Belleville West. And here at the buzzer, not going to be able to do anything with it. So we will head to the fourth quarter. Just a two-point game. Cahawks have a 32-30 to 30 lead. And we are back in just a moment on the Cahawks Sports Network. Welcome back to Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. I am Todd Duke. Dr. Chris McCluskey is here. So is Zach Roseman. Glad that you're with us here on this Tuesday night. Final home game of the regular season for your Collinsville Cayhawks. And it's the uh, final regular season basketball game for us as well. As we don't have any more action until the playoffs begin. One week from tonight. Yeah, big eight minutes here. Possible Southwest, Champion, Southwest Conference Championship on the line. Still waiting for a final from O'Fallon. As soon as I get it for you, I will, of course, pass that along. Well, as a matter of fact, I just got it. Uh, O'Fallon wins 47-39. to 39. So Collinsville cannot clinch a championship here tonight. But if they win, and then they win Friday night at East St. Louis, you don't have to worry about anybody else. I noticed three or four of East St. Louis ball players up on the balcony earlier here, you know, doing their due diligence on scouting and that sort of thing. Hamilton with the foul, shot by Skeet, won't go. I think I missed the score over here somewhere. 32-32. Braxton Stacker picks up his second foul. And to the free throw line now is going to be Rayshon Taylor. Rayshon is three for three here in this game from the charity stripe. Why do I say things? Murphy's Law, man, Murphy's Law. So on the other end, after the rebound try on the missed shot by Taylor, KJ picks up a foul. Well, with as many fouls as the Lancers have at nine, one more were in a super bonus. So free throws are inevitably gonna be a key part of how this game plays out. 32-32, 7-10 left to play here in this fourth quarter. Here is Eric Wade. Wade with a bounce pass to Hamilton. Hamilton on the wing, back out toward the top of the key now for Pickett. Pickett directing traffic and gives the ball up to Hamilton. Hamilton gives it back to Braxton Stacker. Yeah, he's running a high off ball offense. They're coming off picks There's without the ball in the Stacker elbow. for three, no good. Rebound falls into the hands of Kawan Smith. Collinsville brings it back up, looking to break this 32 all tie. Here is Smith across the timeline. 6.35 left to play here in this third quarter, or excuse me, fourth quarter. Ball poked out of bounds by Hamilton, so Collinsville will inbound at the end of their bench as Jelladini is ready to check back in. He'll take the place of Nate Hall. Yeah, we need another ball handler in the game. I like that move by Coach Darren Lee. Laurent handles the ball very well to compliment Ray and Skeet. Here is Skeet. With the ball out at midcourt. Picks up his dribble, so he has to get rid of it. Now he does so to Gelladini. Gelladini works his way over onto that left wing, reverses direction, and he's fouled by Hamilton. Hamilton will pick up his third. Yeah, so the high-pressure game has benefited Belleville East, but now it's got him in trouble as Collinsville is in the super bonus with 622 left in the fourth. That's going to result yep. in a lot of free throws for Collinsville coming down the stretch. Lancers, by the way, outscored Collinsville in that third quarter, 11-8. to Here is Gelladini. He misses the first free throw, and Laurent looking for his first point in this game and comes in as a... 
64.3% free throw shooter. Took me a minute to find that one. Gelladini can't make either one of them. Rebound belongs to Belleville East. So Lancers bring it up looking to take the lead again. Here is Pickett. Pickett dumps it out. Three-point shot coming from Brown. That one rattles its way home. Ethan Brown, second three-point bucket of the night for Belleville, West, or Belleville East, excuse me. Here comes Collinsville. Three-point lead by East, their biggest of the night. Their earlier one was just two. Here is Yelladini in the corner. Bounces it just outside the lane. KJ, strong move, but he is fouled. That is going to belong to Eric Wade, and that'll be his fourth. He came pretty close slamming that ball against the ground. I think it was just high energy, but you got to be careful uh, with that basketball. But I think that's what Council has to do, keep hammering the paint. You know, we've got David and, and Kedrian in there, and, and keep shooting these free throws. They'll fall. There you go. Jones, all of his points here in the second half coming from the free throw line. That's three for three here in the second half. Jones missed one in the first half where he made two of three. And now KJ needs to sink another one. He does. One point game, Lancers have the lead and the ball. Here comes Ethan Brown. Brown up this near side and then at the top of the key, he'll stop and try to pop it, can't go. Rayshon Taylor there with the rebound for the Cayhawks. Rayshon with a burst of speed off the glass, count the bucket and the bruise. Yeah, Ray outran three guys while he was dribbling the basketball. And uh, again, he just stays up in the air long enough to where the defenders come down and Ray throws the ball off the glass and he's gonna have a chance for a three point play the old fashioned way. Rayshon into double digits. 13 right now, and make it 14. Big 5-0 five, five -oh run here in the, uh, with five minutes to go by Collins. They'll look for a couple solid defensive stands. Five and a half to go, ball comes over here to Ivy in the corner. Ivy takes it out, cuts through the paint, gets tripped up, takes the shot off the glass, good for two. Yeah, the way East is stretching Collinsville out, if they can get through our guards, there's nobody in the paint because they've got us so stretched out. Here's Taylor into the corner for Granger, and Taylor gets it back now over onto the left wing for Smith. Smith to Gelladini in front of his bench. Gelladini being watched there by Pickett. And then Laurent takes it all the way back out to the scorer's table while he gives it up for Taylor. Back to Laurent. Back to Taylor, just outside the lane for Granger. Granger, no room, kicks it back outside for Taylor, and Taylor does a nice job collecting that ball before he's stepping across the line. Here is Gelladini, he's double teamed, gets out of it, and a timeout called by Coach Lee before Gelladini makes that drive up the baseline. We will take a timeout as well, and we are back in just a moment here on the Cahawk Sports Network. Are the lights on your dashboard putting on a show? Bring it to Mike's Automotive in Collinsville. Mike's Automotive is also a T3 certified tire center. They can handle all of the basics like oil changes and tune-ups and the not-so-basics like complete engine rebuilds. Mike's Automotive also has 24-hour towing and has three locations, Milstadt, St. Louis, and in Collinsville. The Collinsville location is at 1150 St. Louis Road, just blocks from the high school. Or call 345-0611 online at mikesautomotive.net and Mike's Automotive on Facebook. The Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been a proud supporter of KOXSports.com and the KOX Sports Network from day one. Since 1934, the Junior Service Club of Collinsville has been providing women in the community an opportunity to make a difference with fundraisers and projects, all that go towards helping the needy in Collinsville. If you would like any information on any event sponsored by the Collinsville Junior Service Club, head to Facebook, type in, Collinsville Junior Service Club, and then click on the event tab. We thank the Collinsville Junior Service Club for their continued support of the Cahawk Sports Network and CahawkSports.com. And a reminder that the Collinsville Junior Service Club's Trivia Night is coming up Friday, March the 20th. Doors open at 6 p.m., game time 7. Table reservations can be made at 618-288-2886. Back here at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. Tied ball game right now, 37-37. Collinsville with the ball, four and a half to go here in this fourth quarter. And here is Smith 
Over on the wing, now over onto the other wing. Into the corner we go for Nate Hall. He thought about that three. He was wide open for it at the free throw line. Rayshon takes it, falls off to the left. And the rebound belongs to Belleville East. That is Bryson Ivy. Ivy backs the ball up and gives it to Pickett at the midcourt stripe. Just about halfway through, quarter number four. Here is Pickett over onto the wing for Stacker. Stacker into Brown. Brown on the left wing, dribbles and drives, and then Hamilton and Taylor run into each other. No call. They give the ball up into the far corner for Stacker. Stacker being watched by Gelladini. Makes his move into the paint. Dumps it off underneath. And Brown off the glass. Can't get it to go. Rayshon with the rebound. Gets it up to Smith. Bounce past the hall. Off the glass. Good for two. Man, great ball movement. Great court awareness. Credit Nate Hall for running the floor. And, uh, man, that's a big bucket. Three and a half to go here in this fourth quarter. Stacker gets it out to pick it. Pickett over here in this left-hand corner. Dribbles his way out, free throw line, puts it up in the far corner for Stacker. Stacker, he picks up, picks up his dribble in the perimeter and I got gives it up. Walk. Yeah, he might have, and that one rolls all the way across the rim. And there's Nate Hall with the rebound for Collinsville. Kayhawks slow things down a bit as they work it up across the timeline as we approach 3.05 left to play here in quarter number four. Yeah, look for the five out look by Collinsville. Probably only gonna take a layup. Celadini gets it back from Hall at the free throw line over onto the far side. Taylor back over to Laurent. Well, if they're not going to come out and guard us, we'll sit here and run the clock all day. Sure. 2.45 left now. Now they're showing some pressure. Here is Smith. Almost falls down. Nice job keeping his balance and then takes it into the paint. Back out to the top of the key and that just wasted about 10 seconds. Over to Geladini. Geladini gives it up to Smith. Smith. Into the corner for Nate Hall, and then back in front of the Kayhawk bench to Smith. 2.25 left now in this fourth quarter. Here is Rayshon Taylor. Taylor in the paint, dumps it off to Nate Hall, and no more room to move. Cut off by Braxton Stacker. Back out front, oh, Gelladini. Shoot. No. Oh, boy. Nate Hall had a chance at a layup, and I think and he, he just mishandled the ball. Yeah. I don't know why he stopped. I think he stopped because you're right. I think the ball slipped out of his hands. I think he did. I think he mishandled it. By that time, the defenders collapsed on him. But that was a great offensive set by Collinsville. You go five out. You accept nothing but a layup. And unfortunately, now Belleville East has a chance to tie the game. And Gelladini just fouled out of his senior night game here at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. And that'll bring David Granger back in off the bench. Granger, the six foot six junior. Bryson Ivey at the free throw line where he has made one of two tonight. Palinsville up by two. Ivey. Can't get it to fall and a rebound called a foul uh, against. I think that's a great call. KJ had had position and, and Braxton just pushed off of him. When you get that arm extended, you're just asking to get that foul called. So here we go, what did we talk about? Free throws, I know. the game, right? Fourth foul against Braxton Stacker. Collinsville's been well into the double bonus since what, 622 left to go in this quarter? That's correct. Here is KJ at the free throw line where he has done pretty well here for himself tonight. So I'm not gonna say anything else. Well, the good news is we're in the double bonus, so he'll have a chance at a second free throw here. Very true. Yep, can't make that one either, and the rebound belongs to the Lancers. Boy, layups and free throws. Here we go, defense, boys. Here we go. Here is Stacker across the line. Kayhawks again still up by two. Two minutes now to go here in this fourth quarter. Bounce pass to Wade. Wade. Being kept outside by KJ. KJ comes away with the steal. It bounces to Granger. Two, Taylor, good for two, and the bruise. Unbelievable, the big guy, Kedrian Jones, picks the guard's pocket, keeps it alive. Great ball movement by David Granger. For Rayshon Taylor, the all-time scoring leader in Collinsville here on his senior night with another chance at a three-point play. I just now noticed we uh, got another Roseman on the camera. Mom came up to take the place of Zach so he can go down in the student body cheering section. That's what I thought. Yeah. I've, I've seen that move before. Uh -huh. I've seen that move You're before. You're a good mom there, Lisa Roseman. At the free throw line, Rayshon Taylor. Collinsville up 41 to 37. Rayshon hits it. 
Well, special players make special plays on special days, and that was a special play by a special player. 42-37, Collinsville extends their lead. Here is Stacker off the glass, can't get it to go. Rayshon gets the rebound. Back the other way we go. Taylor with a head of steam. Oh, to Granger for the two-handed slam jamma Great court awareness by Rayshon Taylor. And David Granger elevates and brings down the house here at Virgil Fletcher Gym. 1.20 to go. Here in this fourth quarter, here is Ivy. Ivy dribbles through the paint. Oh, hey, that's a smackaroo in the, almost in the face. And KJ apologizes to Ivy. And actually, they're gonna. Yeah, good sportsmanship, good sportsmanship. Nate Hall will pick up his second foul. And to the free throw line, it will be Bryson Ivey. Again, one for two in the first half of this game. You know, and Laurent fouled out, I almost said, I like having Granger in the game for what his leaping ability brings, whether it's rebounds or dunks, and uh, he certainly showed it off. Ivey hits the first free throw. Brings his team back to within six. 113 left to play here in this fourth quarter. Bryson Ivey, the 6'1 junior, ready for his final free throw. And that one's no good, and the rebound knocked out of bounds by Braxton Stacker. So Collinsville will get the ball back. Yeah, more good position by Keaton Jones. He's really, really rebounded well tonight. By the way, that was the eighth foul for Collinsville as a team. Here is Rayshon Taylor. Taylor. Up the sideline and a blocking foul is gonna get called against Braxton Stacker. And Stacker will foul out of this game. He fouled out of the game at Belle Belle East last month as well. Yeah, other than him fouling out, that's actually not a bad foul because it stops the clock and it forces Collinsville to make free throws, which really is Belle Belle East's only chance right now is if we start missing free throws. Yeah. But they've got to stop the clock. Rayshon at the free throw line, so no one better to have at the charity stripe than number 13. And he hits the first one. Yeah, what a way to step up and make some big plays here. His final game here at Virgil Fletcher Gym. He's had some great moments in this gym, hadn't he, Todd? Sure has. There's another one. Two for two. That's the free throw lane or free throw line we watched him make. What was it, 28 or 29? Yeah, in a row? 29 in a row in oh, the uh, last year's Perry Farms. Holiday Classic. Here is Brown. Brown over to Pickett for three. That one's good. And that is going to prompt Bell Bell East to take a timeout. It is a 60 second timeout. So we will take one right along with them and we'll be back in just a moment here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. At Visionary Wealth Advisors, we empower you to see your future before it's your future. To create your inheritance. To build your vision. To anticipate the known and unknown. And to find potential in both and build new dawns. Visionary Wealth Advisors. Back here at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasiums, the Roseman Squared, and Dr. Chris McCluskey and Todd Duke are back with you, 57.3. Left to play here in this fourth quarter. Collinsville up by five. Oh. Yeah, he was hanging on to Ray. He's upset with the call, but heck, he was hanging on to him. Yeah. So that's going to be a hold all day long. And that one is going to go against Bryson Ivey, and that'll be his fifth. He's fouled out. Oh, Lancers are dropping quickly here. I only had him down for four. And I think Mr. Ivey saying the same I thing. Think he feels like he has four as well. But that is the official scorer's table over there. I'm not going to argue with them. I would never argue with a sulky. 
No, good idea. Yeah. I tried that once no. with Jerry. Didn't didn't <laughs> yeah, I bet. Didn't end well. <laughs> Here's Ray Sean back at the free throw line. There you go. Salt this game away from the charity stripe. Six point lead. This one can make it a four possession game. Yeah, right. Rayshon Taylor Three not going to walk out of here a loser tonight. I can promise you that. Yeah. So Taylor makes both. Collinsville extends their lead, 48 to 41. Three possession game, and here is Pickett trying to make it a two possessioner and no good. And then a foul coming up uh, against Kedrian Jones on the rebound effort there by Wade. Kedrian pleading to Kevin Jones, one of the offici officials tonight. At Collinsville Cahawk alumni, and uh, Kevin just says, what do you want me to do about it? I didn't call it. Yeah. <laughs> Here is Wade at the line, and that one's a little too straight and too hard, and Eric Wade, his first trip to the free throw line, he comes in as just a 51.3% free throw shooter. Yeah, Rayshon being a great leader, reminding his guys, do not foul. And no on the basket, yes on the rebound for Collinsville. And the Lancers are going to foul for the rest of this quarter. And this one is going to go against Ethan Brown. That'll be his fourth. I'll tell you what, Skeet was off to the races. This Brown kid must be quick because uh, to be able to keep up with him and get your hand in to foul him, that shows some speed. Quan Smith at the free throw line. Just four points tonight for Skeet. And he's 0 for 1 from the charity stripe. So reverse jinx time. Oh, come on, Todd. <laughs> And there we go. Now, either way, it's a three possession game, whether you make those or miss them. So, Collinsville just has to not foul. You know, I let him drive to the bucket, score two points. Hawks are up by eight. That was almost a turnover there. Now onto the wing and back out front for Pickett. Over to this side now for Thomas. Thomas cuts through the lane, takes the shot, can't get the off-balance shot to go. Rebound belongs to the Cahawks. They bring it back up. Rayshon Taylor double-teamed, looking to get out of it somehow or another, and he gets out of it with a foul. This one may go against Thomas, and Zion Thomas will pick up his second foul. And back to the free throw line is Rayshon Taylor with 23.7 seconds to play here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, once again, Ray scores over 20, you know. Joey Halbrook says, position. nice job tonight, guys. Run that clock down. Thanks for the broadcast. Well, the reason that we have these broadcasts is because folks like Joey Halbrook can watch them. Yeah, he's a great supporter of Cahawk yes, Athletics as well. Does a lot of things for the, the school and the kids and uh, uh, just a great guy. Here is Taylor. Good. Oh, here comes big Aaron Moulton in the game. Yeah. Aaron Moulton's going to get a chance to come into the game with 23.7 seconds left. All seniors on the court for Collinsville tonight. What a moment here at Virgil Fletcher Gymnasium. Logan Carlisle comes off the bench and joins his teammates. And now all seniors on the floor and a big emotional boost for Aaron Moulton, who suffered a horrific injury in the uh, game at Lincoln in the football season and has not had a chance to come back and play any basketball, but he's out on the floor now. Yeah, what a moment for these guys. They've been through so much together their entire lives. And uh, what a deal. They'll never forget this the rest of their lives. 14.8 seconds left, Collinsville up. 50 to 41, and uh, Logan Carlisle looking for his first points since early, and he hits it. Way to get on the books, your final night of your senior year here. Coach Lori Billy's over here, tears in her eyes. I was trying to hold them <laughs> off. I try not to go there, Coach. Yeah, you had to go over and look at her, and she's, been, not to go she's there. been crying for a couple of weeks now, so don't look at her. <laughs> Here's Thomas. Thomas just outside the lane, takes the shot. It goes through. Thomas scores his first point of this game, but that's going to do it, folks. The buzzer sounds. Final score, 51 to 43 in favor of your Collinsville Cahawks. A big thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. And Zach Roseman over here on the camera as well is 
We now move into the Chiropractic Works post-game show here on the Kayhawk Sports Network, brought to you by the man on the other microphone all night, Dr. Chris McCluskey. He and his crew are focused on helping as many people as possible live high-quality lives all through chiropractic care and wellness. Visit Dr. McCluskey at Chiropractic Works in Collinsville at 410 Regency Center, just off of the Beltline Road in Collinsville. Give them a call at 343-3602 or online, chiropracticworkscollinsville.com. Chaos win this one tonight, 51-43 on senior night. One more game left in the regular season for the Cahawks will be this Friday at East St. Louis. We'll have a chance to talk things over with assistant head coach Eric Anderson, plus give you all of the numbers from this big win here tonight for Collinsville. 51-43 the final, and we're back with the postgame show in just a moment on the Cahawks Sports Network. As the director of sports medicine at Next Level Performance Institute, I oversee the care of all of our athletes, many high school, collegiate, and professional. Our goal is to help athletes stay on the field and maximize their performance. We have state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment where we can actually perform testing to get to the root cause of problems that could be getting in the way of athletic performance. When it comes to taking care of athletes, we take a full body approach, whether it's musculoskeletal ailments, nutritional issues, organic issues such as headaches, sinuses, digestive issues. We have advanced training to where we can remedy health issues and return an athlete to play as quickly as possible. If you or your athlete are dealing with any kind of nagging sports injury and would like to see if we can possibly help, feel free to give us a call or come by the office anytime. All Pro Tees in Caseyville is your place for custom apparel and has been for over 20 years now. Why? All Pro Tees can handle any size project, big or small, and they specialize in large group orders. At All Pro Tees, quality is number one on their list of priorities, as is evident by their excellent customer service. Do we mention All Pro Tees has over 20 years of experience? They can even help with fundraisers and event merchandising for your group. So for all of your apparel needs, for civic groups, sports teams, business outings, or even a family reunion, your apparel needs stop at All Pro Tees. All Pro Tees in Caseyville, right across the street from Cahawk Stadium. Online at allprotees.com or on Facebook at All Pro Tees. Or call All Pro Tees at 344-2200. Sloan's Pub House in Collinsville. Sloan's Pub House is now into their third year of operation on Main Street in Uptown Collinsville. Sloan's Pub House offers daily lunch and dinner specials that feature homemade pizza, burgers, sandwiches, salads, and more. Sloan's Pub House offers a great variety of craft libations for you adults, as well as a great brunch on Saturdays and Sundays. Sloan's Pub House, 119 West Main Street in Collinsville. Give them a call at 618-855-9100 or online at sloanspubhouse.com. The Times Tribune. Madison County's longest-running leading independent newspaper. The Times Tribune has now added Collinsville to their coverage area this year, including coverage of City Hall, happenings in Collinsville, as well as coverage of the Unit 10 schools and the Collinsville Cayhawks, plus more. The Times Tribune is a weekly hometown newspaper that is published every Thursday and has been reporting news and sports in Madison County for over 30 years. Subscriptions are only $32 for an entire year, delivered to your home and the online edition. For more information, call the Times Tribune at 618-667-3111 online at www.timestribunenews.com or follow them on Facebook at Troy Times Tribune. Just because you can cut your own hair doesn't mean you should. The Shop, a great place in Collinsville for men and boys haircuts is where you should take your hair. The shop is owned and operated by Collinsville High School graduates Danny Cress and Jody Neiman and is located at 103 South Seminary Street in Uptown Collinsville. The shop isn't just another place to get a haircut as Danny and Jody take great joy in getting to know their clients and look forward to turning those clients into friends. When you sit in a stylish chair at the shop, Jody and Danny pride themselves on getting to know you well enough to say, the usual, so men and boys, if you're tired of the same old cookie cutter approach to haircuts, check out Danny and Jody at the shop. You may just walk out with not only a fantastic cut, but you may also walk out with a friend or two. The shop in Collinsville, 618-772-7175. No appointment necessary. 
The Shop, 103 South Seminary in Uptown Collinsville. Everyone has those projects around the house that you just don't want to do. AW Outdoor Solutions can take care of that for you. Former Collinsville High School graduate Adam Welly owns AW Outdoor Solutions, and he and his crew can handle all of the dirty work around your home or business. Whether that's tree trimming and maintenance, brush removal, power washing, gutter cleaning, and leaf raking and removal. AW Outdoor Solutions can handle that and much more. AW Outdoor Solutions is fully insured and offers free estimates on all of their work. AW Outdoor Solutions. Call Adam Welly at 314-252-8010 or on Facebook at AW Outdoor Solutions. The people of Illinois welcome you. The folks in Collinsville, Illinois, well, they want you to stick around for a while and enjoy the sights, the fun, the food, and of course, the Collinsville Cayhawks. The city of Collinsville is a proud supporter of the Collinsville Unit 10 School District. So welcome to Collinsville. Come on over, catch a Cayhawks game, or enjoy some of the new places to eat, shop, and have fun. There's plenty to do for the young and the young at heart. Enjoy Christmas at the Collins House during the holidays, tunes that bloom in the warm summer months, and more. There's plenty to do in Collinsville, so come on over for a bit. The folks in Collinsville would love to see you. For more information, go to www.collinsville.org. As the Director of Sports Medicine at Next Level Performance Institute, I oversee the care of all of our athletes, many high school, collegiate, and professional. Our goal is to help athletes stay on the field and maximize their performance. We have state-of-the-art diagnostic equipment where we can actually perform testing to get to the root cause of problems that could be getting in the way of athletic performance. When it comes to taking care of athletes, we take a full body approach. Whether it's musculoskeletal ailments, nutritional issues, organic issues such as headaches, sinuses, digestive issues, we have advanced training to where we can remedy health issues and return that athlete to play as quickly as possible. If you or your athlete are dealing with any kind of nagging sports injury and would like to see if we can possibly help, feel free to give us a call or come by the office anytime. And we welcome you back into the Chiropractic Works post-game show here on the Kayhawk Sports Network. Collinsville wins this one here tonight by a final score of 51-43. to And joining us on the post-game program is Collinsville assistant head coach Eric Anderson. Coach, a uh, nice win. Always a nice win when you can uh, win on senior night for the guys. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was a nice little ceremony, recognize the seniors, and then... Uh Luckily, we came out with a W tonight. How cool was it to bring Aaron Moulton back into the game and see that ovation that he got? And that was a pretty, pretty special moment. That was the plan. You know, we were hoping we could have a lead at the end where we, we could sneak him in there, and, and I, knew the, I knew the crowd would, you know, welcome seeing him on the floor, and they did. That student section went nuts. It was a pretty special moment. Yeah, it was. Logan Carlisle was out there, too, so you had all five of your seniors on the floor for the closing moments of that game. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Logan played well tonight. Yeah. Gave us some good minutes and knocked down a big three and free throw at the end, and yeah, he gave us some good minutes tonight. KJ played as well. Uh, he uh, ended up in double figures, and I'm, I'm going to guess that he had probably double figures and rebounds, too. He was a machine out there tonight. Yeah, yeah. He used his size. They, they don't really have a matchup for him, and, and that was kind of the game plan, and I think I think KJ played the entire game. That, yeah, yeah, that's got to yeah. be a first in his entire career, playing all 32 minutes. And he got a steal. And he got a steal. So <laughs> usually he's in some kind of foul trouble or, or asking for a little uh, rest. But yeah, he he played well tonight. Of course, uh, Rayshon was Rayshon. He took over the game in moments when he needed to and put the team on his shoulders. And uh, he, man, I'll tell you what, he's just a special player to watch. Yeah, he is, and especially in transition. You know, we're just waiting. They do a pretty nice job on him in half court, and then all of a sudden we get a long rebound or a turnover, and we, we're off to the races. And, you know, we try to find him in transition. And he had a couple of nice finishes tonight. You know, he's so strong and so quick with that basketball, and, and a lot of teams have a <laughs> It's almost impossible to guard in transition. So he had some good finishes for us tonight. Yeah, Bubba East, man, they're a tough team. Yeah, they're very dangerous. I mean, they got – four or five guys that are capable of knocking down threes and watching some film you know one of the games that we saw on film they had nine threes another one they had six so we knew that was going to be an issue but you know I thought we could have rebounded even a little bit better than we did and we gave them a couple layups on some offense that we had gone over so that was something we, we need to address if we were to play them again but yeah they're they're dangerous and with their ability to stretch you you know with their three-point shooting ability um, it makes it tough to guard at times 
Well, now you have one more game left this Friday at East St. Louis. We were keeping an eye all night on the O'Fallon-Edwardsville game. O'Fallon ended up winning. Okay. So you're going to have to take matters into your own hands. It's simple as this. You win Friday, you are outright Southwestern Conference champions. No sharing of right. the trophy mm -hmm. since 1995-96 season. So, Yeah, and our kids, uh, nobody in our locker room wants to share that, that title. So, yeah, they're pretty excited. And they're going to be ready to go Friday night. Yeah, and uh, East St. Louis, as we know, no slouch on the basketball court. Yeah, yeah and they're playing better. They're yeah. playing well. They just had a nice good win over O'Fallon recently, and they didn't play tonight. Um, so they were off. They were a lot of them were here watching our game tonight, and they're going to come fresh, ready to go Friday night, and see if they can knock us off. But I think our guys will be ready for them too. JV game, a little bit of a heartbreaker there, man. You guys took it to overtime after trailing most of the game, and then almost pulled it out at the end. Yeah, and I've been really trying to work with the JV. We we've been getting off to kind of slow starts and spotting some teams some points, and then they turn it on, and we're trying to get them ready to play right from the get go, right from the tip, and. I thought we did a little bit better job being ready to play tonight. We were in it the whole way. And, yeah, we've had – I'd have to go back and look, but we had a ton of games that are decided by one point or two points. I mean, it's it's been one of those seasons. We've won a couple close games by one or two points, and we've lost three or four by one or two. And So, yeah, it, the parity in our league at the JV level, you know, it's pretty good. And any given night, you just, you just never know. So came out on the wrong end tonight, though. We had a good look at the end. Um, thought we could have shot a jump shot, and we decided to drive it in there one more time, kicked it out again, and, yeah, just it's the way it goes sometimes. So Yeah. All right, so uh, you got East St. Louis on Friday. Um, uh, I'm not doing that game, so I won't see you until a week from tonight at Belleville East against Granite City in some playoff action. And right now, things like looks like things are heading in the right direction. As you went through the little bit of a slump there where you uh, lost a couple of games, and now things look like they're – I, I, and I want to say, and Dr. McCluskey brought it up earlier, too. He was like, man, Rayshon just looks so much more relaxed since that record is off of his shoulders and he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Yeah, yeah. I, we were kind of talking about that, too. If he just, that, you know, there's no pressure. You already have the scoring record. And, and he's a pretty unselfish guy. But with everyone in the community constantly bringing it up, people at school talking about it, it's hard for him not to think about it. That's just human nature. Right. So now that it's passed, yeah, I agree. I think he's going to be a little more relaxed, um, a little more patient. He, he knows he needs to score for us to be successful, but he just can't force too much. So just take take what the game gives you. And and he's such a good player that he his ability to pass it makes him awfully tough to guard. And, you know, and he's always willing to pass it to the open man. Thank you very much for the visit, right. sir. We'll talk to you a week from tonight. All right, Todd, appreciate it. Thank you. And as Eric Anderson, the assistant head coach for your Collinsville Cayhawks, as the Cayhawks win here tonight by a final score of 51 to 43. Leading scorer in this one was Ray Sean Taylor. He ended up with 22 on the night. Kedrian Jones had 12 after that single digits for Collinsville, seven for Nate Hall, five for Kawan Smith, and three for Logan Carlisle. Leading score for Belleville East, Ethan Brown had 11, Bryson Ivey had 10, then single digits all across the board. Braxton Stacker with six before he fouled out. Jordan Pickett ended up with five, Eric Wade with four, Zion Thomas and ZJ Hamilton ended up with two each. Collinsville out-rebounded Belleville East 28-19. The uh, turnovers were even almost. Uh, Lancers with eight, Collinsville with six. From the lines, Collinsville hit 19 of 28 free throws, while Belleville East hit three of eight. And from the three-point stripe, the Lancers hit five of ten, while Collinsville ended up with one of four. And that is going to do it for us for our regular season here. In the uh, realm of basketball, we are off. Friday, we have, I, I personally have a four-day weekend. I have Friday off from work and Monday off as well. So uh, a little rest coming up for yours truly at the end of a uh, very busy winter sports schedule. But we're not finished yet as the boys' playoffs will begin next Tuesday at Belleville East. Granite City is the first team to face Collinsville in the upcoming postseason. And that will be a 7 o'clock game that we'll have for you on the Hawk Sports Network one week from tonight. So. A uh, very big thank you to the uh, Rosemans over here who took care of the camera. Paulina Gutierrez was on the camera for a little bit too while Zach was doing his band responsibility. So thank you to her for the little bit of time that she filled in. And thank you to Dr. Chris McCluskey for joining us on the broadcast. And a big thank you to Logan Carlisle for joining us on the pregame show. And, of course, Eric Anderson for joining us on the postgame show. My name is Todd Duke, and until one week from tonight, 
It's playoff basketball time, folks. Everybody enjoy the rest of your night.